On April the 30th, 2007, just a little over three years ago, Israel Today ran this amazing headline story, Rabbi Reveals the Name of the Messiah. Rabbi Itzhak Kaduri was famously known for his memorization of the Bible, the Talmud, and other Jewish writings. He was a teacher and a revered master at Nahalat Yitzhak Yeshiva Seminary. He knew Jewish sages and celebrities of the last century and rabbis who lived in the Holy Land who kept the faith alive before the state of Israel was even born. Kaduri was not only highly esteemed because of his age of 108, but he was charismatic and wise. Chief rabbis looked up to him as a righteous man. Thousands visited him to ask for counsel or healing. His followers speak of many miracles, and his students say that he was a prophet of many disasters. A few months before Kaduri died at the age of 108, he surprised his followers when he told them that he had personally met the Messiah. The Messiah had appeared to him. He wrote the name of the Messiah in a note, he said. His official website had mentioned the Messiah note. David Kaduri, the rabbi's 80-year-old son, confirmed that in his last year, his father had talked and dreamed almost exclusively about the Messiah and his coming. My father has met the Messiah in a vision, he said, and he told us that he was coming very soon. Kaduri gave a message in his synagogue on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, teaching how to recognize the Messiah. He also mentioned that the Messiah would appear to Israel after Ariel Sharon passed. When Kaduri died, January the 28th, 2006, more than 200,000 people joined the funeral procession on the streets of Jerusalem to pay their respects as he was taken to his final resting place. Shortly before he died, this teacher of Israel wrote the name of the Messiah on a small note which he requested would remain sealed for one year. One year later, the note was opened in 2007. When the note was opened, it read as follows. Concerning the letter abbreviation of the Messiah's name, he will lift the people and prove that his word and law are valid. The Hebrew sentence with the hidden name of the Messiah reads like this. The acronym of that sentence, that is the letter abbreviation that Kaduri spoke of, or the first initials of each word, spell the Hebrew name of Jesus or Yehoshua, or Yeshua, the Hebrew root word of salvation. When the name of Yehoshua appeared in Kaduri's message, ultra-Orthodox Jews from his seminary in Jerusalem argued that their master must not have left the exact solution for decoding the Messiah's name. The revelation received scant coverage in the Israeli media. Only the Hebrew websites, News First Class, and Kaduri.net mentioned the Messiah's note, both of them insisting that it was authentic. Israel Today spoke to two of Kaduri's followers in Jerusalem who admitted that the note was authentic, but very confusing for his followers as well. We have no idea how the rabbi got to this name of the Messiah, one of them said. I know this, the answer of the identity of the Messiah as Jesus, given to Kaduri supposedly, is absolute truth. As such, I believe it had to have been revealed from Jesus himself appearing to Kaduri, much the same as Jesus appeared to the Jewish Pharisee Paul on the road to Damascus 2,000 years ago. It is amazing that the leading Jewish teacher of Israel until 2006 would, on his deathbed, proclaim in a message that Jesus Christ is the Messiah and is soon to return. That is astounding and almost unthinkable. It is also amazing that he was specifically told that Jesus would return shortly after Ariel Sharon's death. As of the making of this film, Ariel Sharon is still alive in a coma. Could it be that this modern day Apostle Paul received from the Lord Jesus that his return is indeed very very soon. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Steve Fletcher with the Trumpet for My People. Today is December 28th, 2022. And I want to share some things with you guys today 
that I have considered here and uh, seen, and as I was in the middle of this uh, study, I received an amazing revelation. And uh, so this is what I want to share with you. Okay, where are we right now? I want to consider uh, where we are as far as the connection to Hanukkah that we already have uh, with the announcement of the new government on December 21st. And we are coming up on Thursday, December 29th, which uh, everything seems to be in place uh, right now. The uh, coalition governments uh, and parties have signed agreements. I don't know if all of them have, but at least three or four of them have already signed the agreements. And um, they're on track for swearing in of the new government on Thursday. And then if you go um, to uh, the 37th government of Israel, which is going to be the sixth Netanyahu cabinet, the sixth time he is going to be prime minister, um, it shows it is planned for January 2nd of 2023. Now that was the cutoff date of the of the of the last opportunity. Everything has to be finalized by January 2nd. Okay, but they're moving it up and they're getting it done by December 29th. As we speak right now, everything that I have seen shows that everything is on track for the formalization of the government tomorrow, December 29th. And uh, Benjamin Netanyahu will be sworn in on Thursday, December 29th, 2022. Okay, so we have three dates, okay? We have three dates that are important in this. The key dates are <clears throat> December 21st, which was the announcement, okay? The announcement came on December 21st. There was even a midnight deadline there. And he before midnight on December 21st, he had to get the call in to President Herzog. And he made a phone call before midnight on December 21st and announced that he had everything in place to start the new government. So that was December 21st. And that was Hanukkah, the 27th day of Kislev. That is where this all began, December 21st. Then we have the second date that is key in all of this is December 29th. And that is the vote that looks to be in place for tomorrow. And it's a seven or eight day warning from December 21st. Okay, so the, the second key date is December 29th. And that seems to be in place for the... Uh, for the finalization and the swearing in of the government. Then we have the actual day that is the final day. And according to Wikipedia, the, the, the 37th government of Israel is planned for January 2nd, 2023. The date is to be disclosed. And so we are looking now at December 29th. But all of these dates are interesting and very important. And let us consider everything that they are showing to us or all of the, all of the uh, prophetic implications that are connected to all of this. Okay, so we have the midnight cry, okay? Where's the midnight cry? At midnight on December 21st, we had a phone call that was made. Very important in all of this. Then we have the actual formation of the government on December 29th, and then we have the final date that it could have gone to up until January 2nd. Now, look at the, uh, we already showed you here on the 27th of Kislev, the date of the winter solstice. But if we look at the other date shown here on January 2nd to January 3rd, you're going to see that it is the day of 10 Tevet, and it's the day of the destruction of the walls, the siege of Jerusalem. The walls of Jerusalem were taken down, and Nebuchadnezzar came in, and the captivity began on the 10th of Tevet. This was like the beginning of the siege of Jerusalem, the beginning of the captivity process. 
right here on the 10th of Tevet. It's a fast day in Israel, a remembrance of the walls of Jerusalem being torn down and they were besieged by Nebuchadnezzar. All of this is written uh, according to, in the Torah calendar, it shows you what happened on this day, and then you can read about it in 2 Kings 25, Jeremiah 42, Ezekiel 24, and Zechariah 8. All of that is written there. We have three key days now. Let's read this prophecy together. I wanted to start out this video by showing you the prophecy of, of Rabbi Kaduri and how he revealed who the Messiah was, and it was all cryptic based on a, a sentence that he put in there that the Lord will lift up his people and prove his word. Okay, but within the, the, the phrase there, you have uh, written an acronym, the, the first letter of each word, and it wrote out Jehoshua or Yeshua or Jesus, okay? And so within the letter he wrote, there was a cryptic coded message about who the Messiah is. All right, so within this prophecy, let's read together this prophecy. On the eve of the year 5780, the year of corrections, there will not be a government in Israel for an extended period, and the various camps will quarrel much without a decision on either side, and then... On Rosh Hashanah itself, they will fight in heaven, the holy side against the side of evil, and God and his entourage will decide between them. And this is all I can say, and from here I swore not to reveal more secrets and hidden things. This was written by Rabbi Kaduri in 1979. Then there was a prophecy written by Rabbi Shoshani. There will come on the day that two ministers win the government in the land of Israel. Both their names will be Benjamin, and neither of them will succeed in establishing their government or kingship. On that day, know and understand that the King Messiah already stands at the doorway, and on the Sabbath afterwards, he will come and be revealed. Shoshani's statement continues, understand this and remember it. The following portion is recorded in the Sanhedrin Tractate 98a, and this is in an official record in the Knesset archives. The disciples of Rabbi Jose ben Kisma asked him, when will the Messiah come? He answered, I fear lest ye demand a sign of me that my answer is correct. They assured him, we will demand no sign of you. So he answered them, when this gate falls down, is rebuilt, falls again, and is again rebuilt, and then falls a third time, before it can be rebuilt, the son of David will come. Okay, and so we have a number of portions within this. The first thing that we see is that from the year 5780, 5780, there was an extended period of time where they had elections in Israel and there was no government. Okay, that was true. That has happened. And since 2018, there has not been a government in Israel. Okay, so this government that is being formed here now, that looks to be like tomorrow is going to be the day. Okay, tomorrow is going to be the day of the, of the new government. Okay, this is the first time in, in almost four years now that there's been a government in Israel. So the first po portion of this prophecy was completely true. Uh, there, will, there will not be a government in Israel for an extended period. The various camps will qu quarrel much without a decision on either side. Okay, so that has happened. Second portion of the prophecy. There will come on the day that two ministers will win the government in the land of Israel. Both their names will be Benjamin, and neither of them will succeed in establish, establishing their government or kingship. Okay, so we have two Benjamins, Benjamin Gantz and Benjamin Netanyahu. They were dealing with the government trying to form 
a coalition. First, Benjamin Netanyahu tried, then Benny Gantz tried. Neither Benjamin uh, uh, was successful in building a, a government. Neither of them succeeded in establishing their government or kingship. Okay. On that day, no one understand that the, the King Messiah already stands at the doorway and on the Sabbath afterwards, he will come and be revealed. Okay, now we have uh, two portions of the prophecy. One is that there are going to be two Benjamins. That was fulfilled. Okay, there were two Benjamins and neither of them succeeded in forming a government. And then it says, on the Sabbath afterward, he will come and be revealed. Okay, and the third portion of the prophecy says that before the new government can be rebuilt, the son of David will come. So you have two sides of this. You have on the Sabbath afterwards, and you have that the son of David will come before it can be rebuilt. Okay? Well, I want to consider all of this with where we are and the specific key dates within all of this. The key dates were December 21st, which is Hanukkah, then we have December 29th, the forming of the new government, and the actual finalization date or the last possible date of the government being formed would be January 2nd, 2023. Now, could all of this apply to everything we are seeing here now, this prophecy, could it all apply to what we are seeing exactly right now? So when you talk about the Sabbath afterwards, the Messiah will appear, okay, the Sabbath afterwards. Okay, so if we're looking at December 29th as the formation of the government, then maybe we would be looking at the Sabbath afterwards, which would be this coming weekend. And then it says, before it can be rebuilt, the Son of David will come. Okay, so before... Now, when you talk about the, the rebuilding, and we're talking about the date of January 2nd, as the date of the rebuilding, which is already actually, I mean, the government hasn't even been formed yet, but in Wikipedia, it's already got January 2nd. Okay, January 2nd is already written. It's planned for January 2nd. Okay, and so that is the day of the, re, of the uh, destruction of the walls in Jerusalem, the 10th day of Tibet, the day the walls were taken down. And now we have a connection here to it being rebuilt before it can be rebuilt. And so there's a connection between January 2nd and the walls being taken down and the rebuilding that they're planning for the same day, January 2nd. Okay, so now we have Sabbath afterwards, the Messiah will appear, but it's but it also shows before it can be rebuilt, the Son of David will come. And so maybe that's the reason why there are two specific dates within this process, because you have December 29th, which is the formation of the government, and it says the Sabbath afterwards the Messiah will appear, and before it can be rebuilt, the Son of David will come. So both of these prophecies are pointing to the same time frame from December 29th to the following Sabbath, and then from January 2nd to the previous Sabbath. So this weekend would be December 30th and December 31st. Now, here's the revelation I received. And this is the reason why I started out this video with the uh, the clip of the history of Rabbi Kaduri and how it all came about that he revealed who the Messiah was through a cryptic letter that he wrote. And the, the letter was not even opened until a year after he died. But in the letter, it gave a, a cryptic statement, and then within the cryptic statement, the acronym was there that the first letter of each word formed Yehoshua, Yeshua, Jesus. And so it was in this cryptic letter that the name of the Messiah was revealed. Well, this prophecy is so precise, and everything has happened to perfection up until now with no government in Israel, two Benjamins in Israel that neither of them established their, their government or kingship, could it be that there is another cryptic statement within this declaration that is also revealing to us the timing 
or even the day of the coming of the Messiah. And just as his previous note was an acronym written within it, coded in the note was the name of the Messiah, Yeshua. Now we have this prophecy that was given by Rabbi Kaduri. And how does the prophecy begin? On the eve of the year 5780. Let us read that again. On the eve of the year. The whole prophecy begins. The whole prophecy begins on New Year's Eve. Is this a cryptic statement within the letter? Not only revealing this information about the governments and this prophecy about the coming Messiah, but also giving to us the coded message on New Year's Eve, all of this will be fulfilled. I don't even know what to say, brothers and sisters. I don't even know what to say. This time frame from tomorrow, December 29th, going to the Sabbath afterwards, and going from January 2nd, the day of the rebuilding, showing us that the Messiah will come before, then we have a conjunction now at New Year's Eve. The Sabbath afterwards. The Sabbath before it can be rebuilt. The Sabbath afterwards from December 29th. And the Sabbath before it can be rebuilt on January 2nd is December 30th and 31st, 2022, New Year's Eve. And the whole prophecy began on New Year's Eve. Rabbi Kaduri says that he met the Messiah. And all of this will soon be known. <laughs> How much the Messiah actually revealed to Rabbi Kaduri. I pray you guys are blessed. This is Steve Fletcher, a trumpet for my people, the sign of his coming revealed.